Hey guys, it's Miss Arlequin, and today we're going to be looking for evidence that can support the author's use of characterization in Tuesdays of the other June. So today we're going to begin a third reading of Tuesdays of the other June, and our goal during this reading is going to be to analyze the characters and find text evidence that reveals Norma Fox Mazur's use of characterization. From the previous lesson, we reviewed characterization and we know that characterization is a writing tool that authors will use in order to reveal the personality of a character. And we learned about the two types of characterization, direct characterization and indirect characterization. Make sure that you have your notes from that lesson in front of you and review all the different characterization methods as needed. This will be helpful as you go back into Tuesdays of the other June to find your text evidence. Now as we reread the text, we're going to pay close attention to Mazur's descriptions of characters. And we're going to use an evidence chart like the one on the screen to record our analysis and the text evidence that we're going to find. In the first column, we're going to place our evidence, and our evidence can be words, phrases, or sentences, and specifically for this evidence chart, we want it to be words, phrases, or sentences from the text that Mazur uses to describe the characters. Just make sure you note that your text evidence does not always have to be complete sentences, but they are always direct quotations. So we're not paraphrasing something that happened in the story. We're directly copying lines and putting quotation marks around it. In the source column, we're going to write where this information is coming from. In this case, we're going to write the character that it's referring to. If it is the narrator, or since we know that Tuesdays of the other June is a first person narration, the narrator would be June. Or if it's a description of her mother or the other June, we're going to write that in the second column. In the third column, we're going to put the page number. In the third column, we're going to put the page number where the evidence appears in the text. And in some cases, if you know which paragraph it comes from, and since we're using our codex workbooks and the paragraphs are numbered for us, then it's always a good idea to focus and put the specific paragraph, especially if we're going to be using evidence that appears on the same page. This would be a good way to differentiate where our evidence is located. And in the explanation column, which is a very important column because this is your own words, it's where you're going to write what the description means, why it's important, basically how your evidence is showing something about the character and how it's being used by the author to create characterization. So I'd like to model for you finding a piece of evidence and I decided to start with the other June and I found evidence on page 13 when June meets the other June in swimming class. The other June says to her, what's your name? She had a deep growly voice. I chose this because it's the first description that June gives of the other June. She describes the deep growly voice that the other June is speaking in. And this description immediately signals to me, the reader, that the other June is a threatening, unfriendly figure and it's setting up their ongoing conflict. The adjective growly reminds me of an animal, especially one that preys on others. So describing the other June's voice like a growl is basically a way of comparing her to one of these animals. And since she's speaking to June, it's clear that June is her target. So in the explanation column, I'm writing what kind of characterization is being used or what I'm actually learning about the character. So I wrote that this is the first description of the other June, and it shows that she's not very friendly. Her growly voice shows she's animal-like, and immediately I know that June is not a friendly person. One final thing I'd like to point out to you is that in addition to noting in the second and third column the source and the page number, 
I've also included a parenthetical citation. When you cite the source of your information, what you're doing is you're giving credit to where the quotation came from. And in this case, because I am quoting from a fictional text, I'm including the author's last name, a comma, and then the page number where the quote comes from. This is the proper way to cite any quotation that comes from a text. And it's especially important when we get into longer writing assignments. Whenever you're writing a short response or an essay <clears throat> that's asking you to use text evidence, you wanna make sure that you have parenthetical citations so that your reader will know exactly where the information came from. And if they wanted to go back, they could then find it themselves. On your evidence chart, please make sure that you write down my modeled example of text evidence along with my explanation. And please make sure that you have this evidence chart with you in class tomorrow, where we'll be working to add to this chart with additional examples. See you guys tomorrow.